Until we elope to remain together forever because I don't merely want to be something that you stop by to seek refreshment in your desert. But instead, I want to walk by your side as we ride into eternity. <laughs> and then I saw Shauna sitting at that bus stop with her three children, two of which I know are going to different schools on opposite sides of town and one of them too young for school, so she's taking him to a job interview with enough with enough hope in her soul that when the soles of her feet hit the ground today will bring about something better than the day before. So yes, I woke up on the right side of the bed because today I elected to choose joy because joy is not a matter of circumstance. Joy is a choice. So what will you choose to put in your cup in the morning? And I'm just a young black man who has faith in Jesus the same way that stars have faith that space will protect them from this galactic bully that we call gravity who longs to turn their stardust splendid spectacle for passing buyers to watch in awe of its death. So yes, I never really understood the issue. And then uh, I went on Facebook, right? And like normally death don't bother me. I mean, I've seen my fair share of moments where a six foot hole has been a safe haven for a soul in this mortal game of hide and go seek, but there's something real different about Alton Sterling. I couldn't help but think that I was seeing a mirror image of myself being gunned down simply for selling CDs. Or maybe it was for daring to be more than what those cops thought him to be. Or maybe it was simply because he was black and in that moment I better understood my mother's greatest fear is that every time I leave her home, on the other side of that phone will no longer be a son, but be America's next most popular hashtag. But anyway, this tour must go on. If you'll notice, you'll see none of our homes above ground. Because here at Six and Nightingale, we firmly believe in placing all of our homes underneath ground because our community better embraces those that are six feet deep. So we get you started early. But what you will notice is our lavish plush lawns of grain that's made up an enticing combination of cush and cash because nothing better accompanies a high than consumerism. You see, on Sundays they tell me we ain't in no religion, but instead we in a relationship. And in a relationship, you do things for your partner, not out of obligation, but instead out of long-lasting infatuation. And if this is true, then y'all help me track this train of thought. I, I love God. At least I say so. I would do anything for God. At least half the time I think so. But if I'm being real, my thoughts, words, and actions don't always align with that statement, so logically my mind begins to wonder, am I faking? Is my love in this relationship vacant? I'm just saying I've been kneeling and praying for so long that my knees got rug burn, pondering this idea of how I truly love God. But if I walked into Sunday service and opened my closet, they'd say it was a facade. Here you go, dear. You've always been a little bit extra. Now, please, don't take offense to that. What I mean by it is that you've always been more than enough. Because, like, Every time I look into your eyes, I don't think that we're so close, but more so, so close. Like, you and I had to have met up there in the sky alongside God eternities ago. Because we get along just a little too well. Like, you're the yin to my yang. We balance each other out like black and white, quite literally at times. And literally, you are the first thing that runs through my mind. Like, I 
wake up in the morning with this real odd smile on my brother. He stares at me and says, bro, what's going on? And I'm like, you wouldn't understand, man. Just wait till you get older. Like every time I gaze into it, I see something there that I never saw before. And I know, I know it's you burrowed deep inside the very fiber of my being like a late mutation slowly making its way to the surface as I'm attempting to completely cleanse chromosomes of your existence because I just can't get a grip on this perpetual identity crisis and that's why I'm here on this internal mission to seek and destroy every semblance of you, every thought I ever had of you go straight to the flames and incineration is the only compensation for all these years I've wasted. But any good soldier would tell you to ensure victory, you must first know your enemy. So one of the biggest things that we can do is the love that we long to receive, we can give. Um, there's this thing called planting in which, I don't mind, don't worry about it. We plant seeds of what we long to harvest. And what I mean by that is, Whatever you put into people, more than likely you'll get back from them. So if you put in bullying or negative thoughts, then more than likely what's going to happen is those negative thoughts are not only going to stem within yourself, but within them to come back to you. That's spoken word poet Brandon Leake from Stockton. He is about to begin the Dark Side Tour. There are albums of his work. He was reading from a book of his poetry. He teaches and speaks, and there's such a long list of appearances that I think many, many people in the area know you and have heard you in person. Um, what's the response? What do you get back from people? Ah, silence. A <laughs> uh, vast majority of the time. So, like, um, when I do poems, uh, I used to perform with a lot of, like, rappers and singers, and, like, people get, like, super riled up for them. Um, my art uh, produces self-reflection and so oftentimes I get very quiet audiences and then applause at the end but then uh, afterwards I get a lot of people who are deeply impacted and touched yeah. by what's happened on stage so 